Thank you for tuning in to the Miss Blue Radio Show. I'm already laughing before I even get started because, of course, I got Reddick in the building with me, actor. He's phenomenal. And I have some questions to ask him because he has been on his grind. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, uh-oh. No, uh-oh. You've been on your grind. So how, how have you been? You know what? I am, I am great. I'm actually in a great place. Um, once in a while, you have to look around. And for me, I like to know... I'm where I'm supposed to be. You know, it's just like if you're on a road trip, you want to make sure that where you are and where you're projected to be is still in the same direction of where your goal was. So lately, I can announce that I've had several confirmations that I'm headed okay. the right direction. Well, that's good to hear. Thank you. Um, you. Well, I met you, first off, people might want to know where we met. I met you at the cast of Sold Out Bus Stop. No, we met in Jamaica, Jamaica, back in 1998. <laughs> you know what? Like, you brought it up. Because I'm thinking, like, wait a minute. You know, he crazy, y'all. We met at the cast of, uh, or the, not even the screening, but the casting for Sold Out Bus Stop. Shout out to the Houston Media Source. Yes, indeed. Um, Latonya and Sean Ray. Um, that was a really cool project. And then after that, I've just seen you go on to just, like, bigger things. But you know what? It started with Sold Out. You know, I just recently posted a video of my first commercial I ever did. It was with Nike and Charles Barkley here in Houston back in 1999. And when we met, I went to the audition. And I ran for the for my character. Mm -hmm. And I gave him a bit of a, a co comedic, humorous type of personality. And when we got done, Tony was like, mm, didn't see him being comedic, but would you be interested in future we have some things coming up that maybe you know you might be interested in I'm like oh that in itself kind of made me feel like okay that's a nice way of saying thank you but no this is right. literally less than two weeks later I get a phone call she's like after we review your all the auditions we had yours kind of just jumped out and based on my character if he's drinking and smoking and doing all this stuff he needs to have money yeah he was um on um, some other stuff. And you know what? <laughs> Come from it, the, the cool part about that whole project, I've always, you know, once you decide to do something, you need something that really just makes you feel like, you know what, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And Absolutely. at the premiere, at the premiere, to be sitting in the crowd and to hear the audience laughing and reacting to our characters. Yes. And... So many people came up to me when we got done. They're like, I can't believe this is your first movie. You need to stick with it. And this, that, and the other. Oh, baby, I can't wait to see what you're going to do in the future. And I was like, wow. Okay. I'm, I'm listening. The very next day, nobody knew, but the very that night, I was on my way to Austin to be on a Netflix movie for um, the same guy who did Shark Boy and Lava Girl. And oh. uh, Levita. Get out of here. Yeah. And, uh... I'm the um, police chief for a kids movie. And I saw that on your Facebook. Mm -hmm. I saw you talking about it. And, and I was just like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited at what's coming down the pipeline. You know, I have to be thankful because as much as you can find work in this industry, you can go through a season where you can't even catch a cold. And it will force you to be like, hmm. I haven't heard anything. I haven't gotten an email. <laughs> I haven't gotten a call. Nothing's popping. I submitted for 22 things, and I haven't even gotten a call back. I mean, luckily, my my, my, my ratio has been for every 10, I get at least one. Okay. Because at the end of the day, it's really depending on what people are looking for. If you fit the look, that's half the battle. Mm -hmm. Once you do the submission or the, the audition, yeah, but you have to realize you're submitting them in, amongst how many people? Probably hundreds. Exactly. So, hmm. Mm. Mm. That's food for thought, mm. right? Because, yeah, you know what? It's, when you said, when you use the analogy, you can't even catch a cold, that's <laughs> that's some serious the shit. Old, the old man at the barbershop. No, I'm saying, I, I can tell the old man at the barbershop old dude, talking damn. about when you're single, you're single. As soon as you start liking somebody, everybody want to come out and say everybody. hi to Everybody. You can't even go to the gas station and pump gas without somebody winking their eyes. I'm like, you know what? You actually right. The day I think I would just rolled out of bed and looked like hell, 
and I'm just trying to get to Popeye's for a two piece and a biscuit. <laughs> And I started catching a wink. I'm like, wait a minute. Let me look in the mirror. Is this the way I'm supposed to be wearing? Oh, my right God. Because <laughs> I've been doing it all wrong the whole time. Oh, my. <laughs> but no, it, it just goes to say that I knew that my journey, you know, I don't want to do everything that is, just because it's available doesn't mean I, I need to do it. Mm. I had to, I, I took a lot of pride in looking into our own, my own neighbor from Third Ward. Felicia Rashad's words, who she gave, she she blessed me with an exchange in which she told me, you know, be careful with what you select, because it lives forever. I have a nine-year-old son. Eventually, I mean, he already knows how to go on Google and put his own name in there. But guess what? We have the same name. So whatever he looks up that says Radic Edwards, he's gonna find. So oh, that makes no. me more conscious. No, I don't. I'm not worried about that. Okay. My son is. My son saw a sold out bus stop. Yeah, he, he was there for some of the, I think, well, we were just reading some of the. We were the, the reading. Right. He wasn't there yeah. for the filming, right. but we actually <laughs> sat up. He said, I want to, no, he's like, he was an adamant. He's like, I want to watch this. So while we watched it, I, I broke down what he was watching. And he was understanding. He's like, I'm like, do you think this is me or is this me playing a character? You playing a character. Because I did that with That's him good. to get him. To get comfortable with his pronunciation because he was having issues with reading. It wasn't that he couldn't read, he wasn't confident. So I decided, you know what? You like these kid shows? Why don't we get these action figures and we're going to make our own dialogue, forcing you to use your what? voice. Exactly. Yeah, voice. I would go to the living room and he would read to me from the kitchen. So that means you had to project your voice and be confident, right? And that's right. And now, guess what? What? Boy, got all A's. That's amazing. I know. I, I taught school. I taught junior high school health. I know that there are multiple levels of learning. Mm -hmm. Once you understand how a kid learns, you tap into that. A lot of kids aren't confident, and when they aren't confident, just you call them a, the, the class clown. Or in my case, mm -hmm. I was. I, I, you could give me the test. I wouldn't do the homework. I bet you I get you an A on that test because I learned it in a class. I wasn't trying to go home and conflict my Transformers and He Man time with, my, <laughs> with homework. Are you serious? Right? No, no, I, no. I, I'm got, totally I got, I got, I got better things to do. And the <laughs> teachers would be, they would, they were like, my parents were good. Oh, those teacher parent conference nights. Mm. I didn't know what to expect when my parents got home when I was in elementary. They come mm -hmm. home and they're like, Ready? It doesn't make any sense. The teacher says when, we, when they give you the test. You, Make an A, but you refuse to turn in homework. I learned it in the class, Mom. <laughs> I don't need to go home and study it. I got it right the first time. <laughs> what did your parents say about that? You know what? My parents, even to this day, will tell you they always knew I was smart. Mm. You know, my ex-wife gives me credit for helping her write her thesis for her master's. Mm. And this is while I was playing a video game. <laughs> Damn. And I've helped, I, I wrote other people's papers when I was in high school for the fact that I knew I was going to go out on the weekend and who doesn't want a little extra change in their pocket? Oh. Like, hey girl, you want that chicken basket? <laughs> go ahead and get that chicken basket. Yeah. Get a lemonade too, I got you. It's all yeah, good. Yeah. But I cut yards on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And I had a couple of people who played with me in basketball who struggled a little bit. Not that they weren't smart, um, but... They needed that A to pull up their grade. Wow. So I didn't do it all the time. Okay. But if you needed that midterm paper to be right, I was the you man. Was that guy. I, could write, I could write that paper, and I could give you a fade, too, during lunch. Come see me in the locker room. Damn. $10. Come on, let's get it. Got my own clippers. Let's do it. That's but, what's up. You know, I cut yards. I cut hair. Mm -hmm. And I was able to use my, my, my little brain to make a little money mm. during high school. The golden years. Mm, no, I, I, I don't say the golden years. I don't Nineties. miss high school at all. You what? I don't miss it. No, I don't because I had a TSU I had a TSU ID in tenth grade. Oh, I was my hanging goodness. out so with the, I was hanging out with the law school students in tenth grade. Oh. Very good, Marshall. Mm -hmm. Shout out to TSU. Uh oh. I was hanging uh -oh. out. Wait, wait. Uh oh. Yes, I was <laughs> hanging out with them. <laughs> TSU. We were hey. going to pop it. Papados off of 610 and Bennigan's okay. on Kirby and Carabas on Kirby. 
Whoa. I'm like, I'm in 10th grade and you're scared to say hi to this woman, this woman over here. I go over there and say hi so you and your friends are here. Well, I have some friends over here that you know, want to yeah. get you a round of drinks. This is in 10th grade. I had two older sisters. And, you know, I grew up with people who were older than me. Mm -hmm. So you can't just be a kid doing kid things. You kind of had to step up, mature enough to be able yeah. to be in a room. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I, I have, I think for the most part, always done what I wanted to do. So when I decided I wanted to go into acting, it was something I was passionate about. I remember watching James Earl Jones, Sidney Poitier, Denzel Washington, um, <sighs> Anthony Hopkins. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like to look at the people who've been doing. I like to research. Show me, show them, show me your their first movie. Now, show me their most recent movie to see the progression the between their. And, and that's what happened with Sold Out, Bust Out. That was my first movie. That is awesome. Like, I, you wouldn't be able to know that. You would think that you had done like other movies before that. That was good. You know what? I think I've been acting longer than... I think we all have some level of acting to us. Mm -hmm. How many times have you gone to work and did not want to be there but had to put on a happy face? All the time. How many times did you decide, I'm going to go to church, even though I don't feel like it, but I'm going to go ahead and put this on and get so there and get this yeah, work? that's true. Okay, so we've all acted. How long did you stay in a relationship you knew was destined to fail, but you still wanted to acting give like, hope yeah. and act like you didn't know the truth? Mm -hmm. But you had to put on a strong face while you collected your receipts, right? Right. And finally, you got what? Confirmation. Got receipts, yep, and yep. You know, so I can remember being being on the job. I'm not going to say which one. <laughs> I can remember being on the job, and I started my pursuit for acting. I started taking acting classes. I actually have a, a little reel from... The end of the class, they videotape you. They randomly put you with another person, a partner, and you do a scene. And you've had time to rehearse your scene, mm. and they just hey, bring your 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 little disc for memory, and we'll record it, and you get to keep it. I did that, so I started submitting that video, and now it's time for me to go to Austin because I have an audition, but I'm supposed to be at work, so it's like. Okay, this job isn't paying me what I really deserve to be making. Right. I need to make this money. And in two to four hours, I can make what I would make in two to three weeks. Oh, no. Nah, that's, yeah, it's time to start a job. So, you know what? Ring, ring. Hey. <coughs> <coughs> I don't know what happened. Um, <coughs> I've been, um, I don't think I can make it in today. Or, I, I woke up and my right eye was crusted shut. I had pink. <laughs> or, mm -hmm. there was a possum and a raccoon fighting in my attic. <laughs> and they that? fell through the ceiling. Uh, Swats on the street behind me. We can't leave the house. <laughs> I think I, I had a, I woke up to a water pipe busted. I, I'm waiting on ARS to come out here. <laughs> oh, the list goes on. I was just about to say, sound like you got the, damn. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> just to pursue your just own Just to try out. Not damn. guaranteed, mm. but just to simply <laughs> get the opportunity baby. to drive two hours and 15 minutes, walk into a room, greet everybody with a big old Kool-Aid smile, in hopes that you nail your audition, mm. come back home, and typically by the time you get home, agents already giving you a text or a call saying, hey, they really like you. They want to put you on hold. At the very least, they put you on hold. Okay. Meaning that we want to keep you in contention of possibly being the one that we want to... Unless they say, you know, we don't need to look any further. You're the one. We want to do this. The Barbasol commercial that my son and I did that went national, mm -hmm. I submitted. Had a picture of him on my back while I was laying on the, ground, on the floor and I just took a picture of him. I came across the the call, the casting call for it, and I sent my picture of us. Mm -hmm. And they say, we definitely want you to. I was like, damn. We Uber from Houston to Austin at 5 o'clock in the morning for an 8.30 shoot. Whoa. And I was in the back seat. I had actually met a girl who was an Uber driver, and she said, I'll do it for 100 bucks. I surprised her. 
like 100 bucks, and I filled up her tank both ways. So when she got back, I filled up her tank again. She wasn't expecting that. And I gave her a hundred. Yeah, I took care that of her. That's cool. And she was, you know, she was really nice. She allowed me to DJ the music. So on the way up there, really? we had a little bit of music. We we're just chilling. I wanted him to get comfortable. Aww. As soon as the sun started coming up, mm -hmm. I decided, okay, we've been jamming for an hour. Let's get this homework in. Let's get this class work. And so we went over his studies. And then when we got like 20 minutes outside the area, I started coaching him on things to expect. The director is going to ask you to do something. Don't look at me. Mm -hmm. Look at him. Do what he asks you to do. It's real simple. Just relax. You're going to be next to me the whole time. We're going to have fun. We knocked it out in two hours. Went and ate. She came and picked us up from the restaurant and that we were at, and we came back home. Done. Wow. A whole year later, they started showing the commercial. A, a whole year. year later? A whole year later. We were shown during the Super Bowl last year. Wow. I wonder what took so long. Like, it's crazy that these type of things would take so well, long. Well, they, they got it done. Yeah. But they wanted to present it on the big stage, the biggest stage possible. I was about to say, that's huge. Yeah. You know, Everybody it was on sees that. Golf Channel, all sports outlets. And like right now, I have the Next Door commercial. Yes. <laughs> the Next Door that I saw you on. A lot of people. Have seen I saw that because I went to your page to tell you, and then it's like everybody was like, "I saw you on TV. I saw you on my TV." That's what I said. I was like, "Freeze! I know who that is. <laughs> you know, black people extra. I know. Got to tell everybody. I know who that is." <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so how was that? How was that experience? You know, I'm, I'm. That commercial was shot at mm -hmm. my cousin's restaurant. Shout out to Ed Michaud. Oh. Backyard Boyle House right there on Sophomore and Scott. Best seafood in town. Okay. Yes. I have to check yeah, them out. Yeah, yeah you, you really need to. My son's favorite, mm -hmm. he doesn't even call it something simple. He said, I want to get an entree from Ed. He's just fancy with it. I'm like, oh, entree? Okay. I'm like, <laughs> just say seafood pasta. Oh. That's what you want. <laughs> but when I tell you this mm -hmm. food is, you don't have to go to Kima. You don't have to go to Galveston. You go right there, and it's fresh catch seafood. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm gargantuan gonna, shrimp. I might be there this weekend. Don't, what do you mean, Mike? What do you mean, Mike? I want to be there this weekend. You know, it's the same street Frenchies is on. It's right there by the Bayou, Southmore okay. and yeah. Scott. Yeah, I know you exactly. Can't miss it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Forgive her. She don't know nothing about Third Ward. He, what? He is a lie. He putting words in my mouth. You never I know where exactly what I know where Frenchies is. Southmore. Uh -huh. Jermaine, my husband, lives over there. He knows Came about their war. Anyway. You don't know about their know. war. Mm. Difference. Sounds, mm -hmm. com sounds conflicted. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. It does sound conflicting. <laughs> no, but... But no, I will go... Over when I tell you this seafood mm -hmm. pasta mm -hmm. it has this reduction cheese sauce that has champagne in it when it starts, and it's really... I'm talking it's about so hands good. down. The first time I brought it to him, mm -hmm. and I took it, I, I knew he was at my parents' house, and I had to go do something, I was working that night, and so I called and I said, hey, you know what, I'm going to pick this food up, and I'm going to bring it home, they had already eaten, but guess what happened that night, when I brought that they food ate home, again. they ate again, <laughs> and my son, my, my mom, my dad, and he split this, and I'm thinking, okay, I have this whole half to myself, guess who ate the other half? Of that. The, your son? Yes. Oh. That boy didn't wake up until about 10, 30, 11 o'clock the next morning. What? Looking like a pot he had the Looking like he a pot belly ice. pig. Oh, he was just man. sitting sideways. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I'm really proud of you. Let's get on you for a second. Thank you. You know, you have been doing your thing. I mean, you have, I, I mean, you've performed at City Hall. If I tried to do that, I'd get arrested. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, for probably noise violations, oh, my things of that nature. Yes. Uh, but I'm really proud of, I, I know the conversations that we had on set, the things that we want to do. Yeah. And regionally, where we are, compared to where other people may be, or that I lived in Laguna for two years. But when mm -hmm. I lived in Laguna, I was working for Nike. I was doing print and commercial work for them. Okay. And that was back in the 90s. And by the time I got done with that and came back home, you know, I lived in Manhattan. 
Literally, Manhattan, 46th Street between 5th and 6th on Restaurant Row. Wow. And before there was a Google Maps, my, my cousin and I, he basically recruited me to come out there and drive a Suburban. And I videotaped every city block between 4th Street and Harlem before there was Google Maps with two 8mm cameras, a laptop, and a microphone. And one day a guy chased me down and did an interview with me and my cousin. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, what's up with the cameras? I'm like, I'm videotaping city blocks. I'm like, for what? Real estate. People don't have time to leave their job on their lunch break from any point in the city and try to go yeah, look at this place, this place, and this. Instead of just looking at one brownstone, show me the whole block. Right. I need to know if the house on the left or right is dilapidated. Is there a school across the street? Is there a bodega down the street? Let me see the whole block on this side and the other side. And so it was the coolest thing. And while I was up there, I um, had a couple of friends from Houston mm. that I discovered were out there. My homegirl, Melissa Martin, <laughs> and I were walking down Times Square and ended up on TRL with Outkast doing a live performance. Get out of here. I remember and that show. Man. <laughs> Whoa. We got <laughs> we were just walking down the block, That's just crazy. humbugging, just just walking down Times Square. And the guy came up to us, he's like, Do you two want to be on MTV? <laughs> we're like, well, yeah, we're not doing anything else. Why not? He's like, Well go to the guy over there in the corner. <laughs> we go to the guy in the corner. He's like, Okay, now go to that building over there. We get to the building and go he's like, Go to the go to that building and go up the escalators. Go up the escalators. Okay. They all had on headsets, oh, so they okay. basically are like directing mm -hmm. us to get up to the floor that has like a like a over the street, full floor to ceiling glass. The, the yeah. TRL spot with right. Carson Daly. That's crazy. We get there, and this is when bombs over Baghdad came out what? with Outkast. Yeah. I I can't find it now, but about a year ago, I could go to YouTube, and at the very end, I'm like leaning up on the wall. And there's a girl like dancing right in front of me. We're just mm -hmm. chilling, you know, just what we were doing. Yeah. And we still laugh about that. My heart goes We're like, can you believe we were just walking down the street? Next thing we know, and I didn't know how short they were. They are talented brothers. But let me tell you. Damn. I didn't know that. I mean, they're no, they're they're hella talented. But yeah, yeah, of course. Under, you know, album covers make people look a certain size. And but, TV. Yeah, but like, at my at my chest. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always at least thought Andre 3000 was like six foot something. That's the afro. <laughs> That's the afro. Okay, now I know. <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny. But that's a great experience. Like, that's one of them things that you Man, like, nobody some, can take away from you. I've had so many experiences. I drove in a presidential motorcade in a, in a, for a media van because of Sheila Jackson Lee was a neighbor of my parents. And so me and my homeboy Ted, Bruce Hart, got to drive media vans in a motorcade from uh, 45 South all the way to the Four Seasons Hotel and back. But on the way back, the lady who was in my van, I didn't discover, worked for the Washington Post that my sister had interned with. And when she just, when we were talking, waiting, I said, oh, Washington Post. My sister worked at the Washington Post. She said, what's your sister's name? I said, Tamala Edwards. She said, you're Tamla's brother? I'm like, yeah. Are your parents here? In the building. And she's like, well, call them over. And by the time they get over there and start talking, mm -hmm. Secret Service is like, well, look, we got to go. They want to ride. They got to get in the car. Oh. Parents got pictures in the Air Force One. They got a presidential stamp, m and That is dope. Yeah. That's dope. I'm like, wow. I mean, just to imagine... If I was to make a movie, it's starting to end up looking like Forrest Gump because he did just about <laughs> everything. Yeah, you all from a box of chocolates. All from a box of chocolates. <laughs> yeah, Forrest Gump. Yes, that man. You can't forget Jenna. Yeah, Jenna. <laughs> she kind of did my boy wrong, man. Though, man. She was with the whole party. <laughs> she got tossed and turned. Yeah, she did my boy Even wrong in that movie. All right, damn it! But Forrest you survived. He didn't go down with the letters. He was like, uh-uh. I'm just laughing because now I'm thinking Kept his raincoat on. I don't know what happened. <laughs> okay, so look, you got a good narrating voice. But if you had a movie that came out about your life, who would you want to narrate it and why? <laughs> wow. You know, mm, <laughs> when it comes to voices, I have had people to... to I have a high respect for voiceover artists. 
you know, I think a dream of mine would be to be able to be be the voice of a character that was, you know, they live forever, for one, just to start there, you mm -hmm. know. I can remember watching Jungle Book with my mom at the theater off of Main Street by the original Captain Minis, which was a white boat, back in the gap, a long time ago. And I have a, I have, you know, it's like, I have people who are like, man, you sound like that guy. I'm like, what guy? Are you in good hands? It's called accident forgiveness. Uh. It's like, <laughs> I don't look at my account and see that type of money, but hey, you know, if you say right. I do... But my thing with voiceover actors started when I was very, very little. Optimus Prime had a very distinct mm. voice. Um, and then you look at people who've gotten into it recently. I've, I've gone, I've taken my son to the movies, and Ice Cube was the voice of a car, of an animated character. Uh, Christopher Walken, Jungle Book. Mm. You know, I've, I've been loving watching Christopher Walken since Kings of New York, like way yeah. back. Um, and it's just funny, Kevin Hart has really just blown, you watch, I mean, out of everybody, you know, Jumanji and everything yeah. else that he does, but when he played that damn rabbit on, uh, what's that Pets movie, uh, um, he played the white rabbit, <clears throat> the one that said, Ricky! Like uh, I know you're talking, I know about, you're talking about, but um, I just can't think oh, of the name. Oh, I can't like, think of it. Yeah, I can't think of the name. But he's perfect for that role. Right. So if funny. I was to assign somebody that responsibility of being me, like if I was a young me. Secret mm -hmm. Life of Pets. Secret Life yeah, of Pets. Yeah, he was silly in that. And that was a funny movie. It yeah. was. My it son was. loved that movie. Yeah. But for me to assign somebody for that role, you know, to be honest with you, uh, not Junior, but the youngest son from Blackish mm. could be me in junior high elementary. You know, he has a good voice. I hope that he taps into it, but uh, I actually listen to people. I don't just watch TV or movies anymore. I watch them, and I have a distinct ear for their voice. Right. You know, because I'm one of those people that before you can tell me who's in the movie for an animated series, I can tell you whose voice it is. Because mm. I've, 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 I listen like that. I don't listen, I just don't watch the movie. I watch the movie and I hear their right. reflection, their tone, their, you know, it, you know, it's like, you have so many people who are so surprised that the grandfather, you know, uh, Bill Cosby's father in the uh, Cosby <laughs> show was the voice of Panthro on on, on Thundercats. Yeah. You know, if you really do your history, yeah. Neil Hamill, the guy that played Luke Skywalker, has over 300 characters to his voice. Yeah. That's insane. He was the Joker. In Batman the Animated Series. Yes. Yes. See? You that know. kind of glad. Oh, yeah, I'm a huge, I'm a huge dork. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could go on and on about this. Yeah. And, and some voices, too, if you, if you hear certain names, like, the, to your credit, like Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman. Yeah. Like, if there's a DC animated movie coming yeah. out and Kevin Conroy is in it, I'm there. Yeah. Because, you know, like. They his, make it. They yeah. make it. Yeah. They make it. And, and you know. I, I think uh, George Newbern, the voice of Superman in most of the DC animated stuff, is like, if he's if he's doing Superman, yeah. you you know it's going to be a hit. You it's know, it's be fine. Phil Lamar is Green Lantern. You, you know, he. You know, <laughs> you know what my dad did when I was in elementary? One day I was watching Transformers. Mm hmm. Turn the volume all the way down. I know, right? We, didn't, we, never, we weren't able to rewind back then. I'm like, what the hell are you doing, man? Shit, Transformers, man. What you doing? Got my Popeyes, got my Transformers. Uh -uh. <laughs> so he turned down the volume. He's like, just watch it for about half a minute. I'm watching it. I'm like, can you turn this up, please? He's like, it's not the same, is it? I'm like, no, because I don't know what the hell's going on. I can't read cartoon lips. <laughs> you know? Right. And so he's like, so do you watch this because of the animation? Or is it really filled by the voices of the actors who are giving you the, all the feels for yeah. mm. the characters that you're watching? And it's like, damn, I, didn't, I never really yeah. thought about it Good like point. that. I'm like, damn. It's like, that's messed up. Yeah. James Earl Jones. 
taught me a lesson by, you know, when he was younger, they had a TV that the, the volume would go in and out. Mm -hmm. And he said, once in a while the volume would go out on the TV and you were forced to just watch a screen with actors on it and you couldn't hear anything they were saying. But you, but it taught me to recognize their body language, their, their, their responses, yeah. all the other things that you can't really be coached or conscious of unless you really know that in this scene, you need to look bothered. How do I look bothered? Do I just bug my eyes and put my right. eyebrows together? Yeah. Or is there a build up to that? Like, okay, I'm touch I'm rubbing my hands. I'm trying to be cool, mm -hmm. you know. And then finally, I get to a point where there's, a, yeah. Right. He's like, it's the subtle things that people don't that I learned to appreciate with that little TV that just showed me so much without the volume on. Yeah. Being able to take a pause is very crucial. You know, a lot of people think, you know, you know your script, I'm going to say this, you're going to say that, you're going to say this, mm -hmm. I'm going to say that, and then we're going to be done. In scene. <clears throat> no. You might need to say, you know what? I know where you were last night. But that little pause between I know what <laughs> and I know where you were last night has me hanging on your words. Yeah. Right. That's crucial. That's true. That's yeah. really crucial. It's the little things that I've learned to really appreciate when it comes to this journey. Because it is a journey. Ooh. It is a journey. It is. It is. It's not for the faint of heart. Oh, no. It's not for the weak. It's, it's not. I say no parts of entertainment is for the weak. Because it's not. Every day is something different. You got to have the thick. You got to have really thick skin. And that should also excite you if you're an actor. You That's don't what makes us crazy. You know, well, we know how to adapt. I'm, and yes, crazy is a great <laughs> word because... You could, you could, it takes a lot for me to be pushed over the edge. I mean, you can call me anything you want to call me. You know, I know who my people are. I know who I love. Right. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm okay. You might not know me. I know who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, but at the end of the day, I think the respect that I've started to see from people who I've known for some years now that has sent me messages or called me and saying, Man, you really, you know, I'm starting to, you really, you stuck with it. I'm like, well, I jumped in it. Mm. I didn't put my toe in it. <laughs> I went head first. Yeah. You know, I was committed mm. from the jump. I was trying to see if it was cold. I was in elementary. I was in a swim team during the summer. Best way to adjust to the cold water, jump your ass in there. Mm. You'll, you'll adapt. Sink or swim. Somebody just told me that it didn't work out that good. I went on a diving board and they was like, <laughs> you just need to jump. And then you. they pushed me in like, I think it was 10 feet and just pushed me. Did you know how to swim? I didn't. They was like, you either going to learn it or you're going to have no choice. But to, I That was chlorine just, cleaned <laughs> out every part of your lungs. I was going up the pool and even come try to jump in and he could swim great. Yeah. He did not. He just that happened me. to me though. He I said, well, you didn't I drive. I was pushing a water slide. Just, just to show you, we were, out, we were out of town on a vacation. Mm -hmm. And I was pushed on the top of a water slide. And I was trying to resist it so bad, I tried to put my hands underneath. Oh, no. Didn't know it was rusted under there. And I cut the hell out of my one of my fingers. So by the time I cut myself, oh. now I'm going into the water with the cut finger. I'm like, is this what the chickens go through at Tyson? Oh, my goodness. I'm like, damn. You know, I had my little floaties on my arm. But I was like, look, I was perfectly cool sitting on top of this damn slide, watching everybody have a good old time. <laughs> had on my, 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 my floaties, made me feel like I was, you know, Hacksaw Jim Duggan or somebody. <laughs> I'm cool with this. Great view. I wasn't expecting someone to come up behind me and just say, you going in. Oh, I would have been And my there. dad was down there. You know, it was like, why didn't I trust my dad to catch me? And he's right there at the end of the because my mm. dad would have made it challenging a little bit. He would have let me go in the water, but he would have caught me. Oh, I know what, yeah. But you got to have that experience. Yeah. But once I got in, <laughs> once I got in, it was all good. And that's the same thing. I, I think <laughs> I think that's a lesson a lot of people, a lot of people block themselves out of fear. Being in this industry, you can't be scared of denial, being told no. That is so, so, so oh, very it's true. Because don't you get it? I've had people even tell me while I was there, we're not gonna we're not gonna cash you. And I know I did good. They're just 
I'm not going to cash you for this one. Not a particular reason. Not a, they, don't not have, guess do what, they don't have to give you one mm -mm. when it's their production. Exactly. And, and I think that was one thing that I had to learn. I also have had, I don't know if you dealt with this, I'm a woman, so I've actually had other women mock me on Mock me during my, you know, my um, audition. What? Talk about a dress or talk about something. And that kind of, it didn't make me stumble over my lines. But if I wouldn't have been prepared and know my monologue, I would have been, I would have felt like some type of way. Like talking about me right there on set, like. Yeah, but look yeah. where you are right now. Yeah, and, but you, that's that thick skin though. Yeah. I didn't get mad and say, um, girl, who are you talking to? I see, I was just like, thank you for your time. I can't. I mean, but but clearly, that's cool. some of us can't fly with pigeons. We like we like higher. We like mm. to go. We, we we soar at a better. That's true. At a at a better destination. I can't do under three thousand. I mean, under under a thousand feet. Mm -hmm. My my lungs work at full capacity. So you know, people who are like that basically are trying to pour salt on you. You know why? Most times people do that. It's the same reason that people laugh when they. When we were kids and somebody tripped in the cafeteria on their shoelaces because they're glad it wasn't them. <laughs> Damn. That's why they laugh. Because <laughs> their insecurities are pushing them to be like, ha ha, yeah, you fail. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to get my ass up. Yeah. And at 3 o'clock, I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> Meet me at the flagpole. <laughs> when that last day I went, it's your ass. No. no. But no. I, was, I, I was, it was just, you know, we can all go back and look at embarrassing moments. Oh, and yeah. We learn from them. But I have been on set with people who just couldn't stop talking before they read their lines. They're talking about what they did, talking about this, and what have you done? Asking me questions. And it's like, I'm getting into character right now. Oh, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm assuming who I need to be when I walk in that door. So right now, you, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I didn't drive two and a half hours to get to this audition just to have a conversation with you you're not the gatekeeper in the situation i'm here to hopefully successfully yeah. you know get up um wow coming through we have rain <laughs> right <Tennis. Hot> <laughs> i was like <laughs> chris clean refreshing have you had your rain today <laughs> Next right. commercial. Branch chain amino acids given to you by Ray. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> and that's why I like voiceover work. That right there, what I did. I have done that for years. Just messing around with my friends. <laughs> we could be walking to U of H basketball court. We could be yes, at lunch. And, oh, don't get me in the classroom when the teacher walked out. Oh, oh so, man. I did not care if you had right names on the board. <laughs> I, you, but you're going to write my name on the board <laughs> and put it in capital letters. Make me number one. Because I got something to say. <laughs> you know? bad, man. It wasn't bad. <laughs> it's not bad if, you know, you're still going to get an A on the test. Ah, uh, you know I just what? Didn't, I, remember, knew, I knew I some did, people like that. I don't do homework, but yeah, I, I, will, I will take care of the test. I knew some people like that, so that, yeah. That's, that sounds about right. I, would, I got in trouble second grade for correcting my second grade teacher on how to say anaconda. Well, how did she pronounce it? Anaconda. Oh, no, hold Ooh, on. that's way off. <laughs> Come on, teacher. No, we can't do that. But you know what? Years later, here I am teaching junior high school health. Mm. I was just an assistant substitute at this school. It was a charter school. I took this job. And out of the blue one day... I was working downtown for their high school campus, and I'm on my way downtown, and I get a phone call. Yes, Mr. Everts, we need you to report to the junior high school campus. Um, not sure how long, but we need you to assume the responsibilities for the junior high school health teacher. Mm -hmm. Junior high school health teacher. Right. I tried to fight a student, so basically, they're out, I'm in, and it's Valentine's Day. I have no lesson plan, had no... Heads up the day before that, hey, tomorrow you're going to be reporting at Yikes. a new location. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm driving to the school. I'm like, what the hell am I going to teach these kids? I have six classes I need to teach. Three before and three after lunch. Okay. Six, seventh, and eight. So I decided everybody's going to, I was just, that's just how it went. Everybody's going to learn the same thing every day. So I went to the board. 
kids, my first class comes in. I get there, and they're, they're coming in. And they have their cards. Remember those I choo choo choose you mm-hmm. and all those other Valentine Day, you know, candies and things. I'm like, oh, that's, isn't that syrupy sweet? Okay. <laughs> so I go to the board, and I'm like, what is today? It's like, let me just have fun with it. Did the whole, my name is Mr. Edwards. Then I said, what is today? And they said, Valentine's Day. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Okay. And what does this day mean? I put an equation mark. What does this day mean? Uh, this is a day where you express to people that you love them. Mm-hmm. Okay. A day to show your love. So I went through all these holidays. Mother's Day, Father's Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas. All these holidays. Easter. All thanks. I mean, all the holidays. Yeah. I went through it. And I'm like, equation mark, what does it mean? And so when I got done with that, with each class, I did the same thing. Mm-hmm. So when I got done with the, the December, like after Christmas, I turned to the class. I'm like, you guys are pathetic. Oh, damn. That's how they look. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? I'm like, are you serious? They're like, what? You mean one day out of the day out of the year, you t- you show you give somebody a, a card to show that you love them. One day out of the year, you show appreciation for your mother, your father. One day out of the year, you show thanks. It became a lesson on marketing. It just got weird. Mm. But I had nothing else up my, my sleeve. Yeah. So I'm like, why do you think you see Santa on a Norelco razor? <laughs> oh my God. Why do you think that before Halloween, you see all these candy commercials? Why do you think you start seeing the... Around Easter, you see the lion in that egg. What's that egg commercial that the lion is? Uh, uh, wow. Easter, yeah. Cadbury. Cadbury body, yeah. eggs. It's called marketing. Marketing, definitely. You know, mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, oh, you're not crazy. You're teaching us something. I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You should be doing it. You should be thankful all year long. You should be, you know, I mean, all these things, they're great, but because of, you know, powers that be, you know, it's a yeah. day for, you know, we're going to sell out of cards this day, candy this day, turkeys yeah, this day. Yeah, that money. Yeah, roses. Oh, my God. You know how cheap roses are the day after Valentine's? Oh, we, yes. And it, do you so, and two after side, Halloween, come November 1st. Side, <laughs> you know what? Side chicks getting two dozen of roses. Yeah, crazy. And you know, you know what? They, society got us tricked so bad, and I won't go deep into this, but society got us tricked so bad that they ain't even re- the reason for Valentine's Day. It's a it was a massacre. <laughs> you know your history. One of yeah, yeah one exactly. most horrific. Uh, yeah. Yes, he killed. <clears throat> yeah. See, I Saint Valentine's Day massacre. Yeah, but yeah. come on. So they just flipped it and Jim made money. Jim Jones? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. But look, look, because I I have a few more minutes, and, I, and we didn't even touch on this yet. And I I gotta ask okay, you about this bring character, it, bring Jack it. Hanna. Ooh. See, I ha- I have to. Ooh. Cause I saw the po- I Jack saw the Hanna's, poster. Jack Hanna's special. It looks scary, like twisted though. Mm. Like because it's animated. Dark. No, it is way. actually not. So Jack well, Hanna that's, that's is actually a retired boxer. What? I can't help it if that the animation people put some pimp juice in the <laughs> demonstration. <laughs> they and got him wearing a pimp suit. Yes, I thought that's he was not like my, I had no control over that. Okay. You cool. know, he's not about to you know start singing. Whip that trick. <laughs> he looked, that he trick. looked like no, he's not about to do that. Okay. No, the Jack Hanna is my very first voiceover character for an animated series, and he nice. is a retired boxer who sees potential in a young protege and knows that possibly with his coaching, he could get him to the ranks of which he used to be in. That is so... And so it's a very unique character. Yeah. It's very... It's different. And I, out of all the possibilities there could have been for me to, you know, have my first animation character, not only does he sound like me, <laughs> but yes, <laughs> indeed, right. he looks like me. And he's actually a good guy. Okay, so... Uh, and I've always did, dreamed about being a bad guy. Yeah, because he looked like he was just like twisted. Looks like people. he was like in the middle of doing the... Uh, Tootsie roll or something. I don't know. Yeah, what you want to do? Wrench around. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that's going to be interesting to see. I can't wait to see it. I'm, I'm excited. We're wrapping about it up, um, mm-hmm. and it was kind of cool because out of everybody, she was like, you know, actually, we, you, you knocked a lot of your stuff out in 45 minutes. I did a whole season in 45 minutes. Damn. Which was 
like the, the producer okay. stopped midway through. He was like, "Man, I've never gone through lines this quick for a voiceover." You know, usually I have to coach people. I had gone through the script and put Let down me my ask notes. You this. What's so hard about voiceover? You would think it's just you if know, you could read well, no, you, you just read, run your character. But you know, the problem with reading and, mm -hmm. and you sound the same because you're just reading. It's like if somebody goes up and they they they, they, they read the scripture from like four scriptures. Sounds the same. Okay. Different scenes, different moods, different inflection, different tones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I can't say, we're going to the store. I love you, Mom. What time do you want us to come back? Can't be the same voice, same yeah. tone. Like, I thought we could do better. You know what? You try it. And you're in a booth. So, you're not. No, you're I'm, not, just, you're I'm just saying, yet. I would feel like it would be easy. I don't yeah. know why it because would be usually so, because I hear people say that. You, I, because, I, like, with acting, we help each other with the tone and everything else. Well, yeah, that I know. You know, you, you give me a line, and I have to give you something that kind of fits with what you're saying. With the same, Maybe my tone is different, mm -hmm. but I know how to respond. Just going through a character and reading lines without somebody talking before you or after you, and then you jumping back in. I got you. Yeah. I see. It's like trying to, you know, be in a double dutch competition with one leg. It's gonna be a little hard. Oh, damn. Yeah. It's gonna be a little it's gonna be a little little mm. risky, you know. Yeah. But I've seen some some, some great one legged double dutch people. Damn. Yeah. I didn't know that they it's a whole different group. Oh. Yeah, special uh Special Olympics has oh, that. Oh, okay. I mean I, was I didn't like, see wow, I've seen I can't even do that with two legs. I'm like, damn, I'm that is good. getting it, you know, so I, I find encouragement from everywhere, you know, and when it came to the voiceover opportunity, I was literally driving down the street and somebody was like, hey, I have something I think you, you know, are you interested, first of all, I'm like, hell yeah, what, when, what time, what date, yeah, I'll be there, and so I have another opportunity on my radar right now that I need to submit for that I'm that will find me in the studio this weekend, submitting, okay. and not just me, my son. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We did a, I, I like having my son around for the journey. I want him to, you know. Absolutely. You know, I think it's important for him to understand what daddy does. Um, that way, I th I, I, it helps him with his confidence. And, mm -hmm. you know, whenever I have him to help me read lines, he loves it, you know, because he feels like he, he's helping Dad. So having him to be a part of the journey has been exciting. It's been fun. I can't wait for him to. I have a feeling that this next opportunity that's actually been sent directly to me in hopes that he mm -hmm. would do it, I have a feeling that he's going to enjoy this one. That's great. Thank you. I'm going to be, I'm, I'm proud. I'm, I'm going to be, uh... Looking for that Jack Hanna because that just seems like a lot of fun. It is, yeah, it I'm, is, I'm, and you know what? We gotta get back in stride again, you and I. Yes, I know. I'm trying to think of like if I could find some projects that I'm just that's worth it. Like, well, you know like you said, you don't just pick anything, choose anything. I did. A, I just last last Saturday, I was on a student film. Mm. Because no matter how far I go in this industry, I will always consider myself to be a student of the game. I can be great at this, and then I could completely fail or not hit my mark, but I'm not looking to fail. But right. I can see people who are coming up behind me, and um, I, I feel like it's my responsibility to just always keep my pulse, my, my, my art close to me, but also be able to be available for people who are just starting off. It's a short film. Oh, okay. It's a very short film, but it required me to be a serious person. A lot of people are used to me being lighthearted and comical mm -hmm. and things of that nature, but here I am, the bearer of bad news, telling two kids that their father is passed, and I'm a friend. I'm, I'm a friend of their mother. You know, so I like challenging myself. Yeah. I, like, I don't want to be the same person. I don't want to be tight cast for being the. The, the butthole or the, the, the hardhead or the anything. I want to, I look at other people like Denzel. Look at him in mm -hmm. Training Day and look at him in Glory. Yeah. You know, look.
with him as Malcolm X. For you to be for you to be able to really bring characters, look at Chadwick Boseman. You know, iconic figures that he yeah. brought to life. I have pictures of my son dressed up as Black Panther yeah. when he first appeared on screen for Winter Soldier. And we were at the IPIC Theater. I made it, it was his birthday. And I made it special by buying him the figurine and buying him the Black Panther costume. And we stayed at the Omni Hotel right there by the Galleria. And I want him to feel like royalty. Yeah. So I called downstairs and said, hey, yeah, can we get the, the shuttle to take us over to IPIC? And so we got to IPIC, we ate, and we went into the theater. And he was on my right side where the wall is next to him. When I turned and people saw him in my arms, mm -hmm. and he had on his Black Panther outfit, he had people shout out, Black Panther! Aww. And someone else shouted out this, and yeah. someone shouted out that. He just put it, he just buried his head in my chest like, oh, shucks. This is, this is crazy. Oh. We got back to the, to the Omni Hotel. You know, they have a club there. Back in the day, it was the Black mm -hmm. Swan that was in the basement of the Omni Hotel. So it's all these people. That's when I shook J.J. Watt's hand. He was there. Okay. I'm like, I've never seen my hand disappear. Damn. I do got some mitts. So we get back, and we get out the SUV, and all these people turn. And like, oh, my God. Da, 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 da. He's like, okay, this is great, but okay. I need to get up. Yeah. He's like, he's like I, I can't do it again. But he had such a great birthday. And he was so excited. I can just remember turning and looking at him, seeing Black Panther when he first jumped up on the scene, uh -huh. on the screen. And there was nothing that I could have said, nothing anyone could have done that would have taken his eyes off the screen. So, R.I.P. Yeah. to Chadwick with Yeah, rest in peace. Definitely. Um, definitely made an I impact on my child's life and mine. Yeah. You know, he, he definitely was a great actor. Yes, he was. Yeah. Rest in peace to our black hero. Um, but, um, like I said, I'm going to uh, stay tuned for all this stuff and hopefully we'll get a, another role so that we can do our acting and stuff. We together. had a good time yeah, because it was, in the middle of summer. <laughs> It was hot, my makeup was coming off my face and everything, but y'all, I mean, it was a really good cast. It was. It, was. We, we, it didn't feel like work. And that's, it did. that's the best compliment to any it, it cast and crew that's able to work together. When it doesn't feel like work, and it feels like you're hanging out with friends and you're having a good time. The best. And then you go and look at the final product, and you're like, you know what, we did yeah. that. We did. We did. That was cool. Well, thank you for coming by. I wanted you to let people know where they can find you on social media. Who social media? Am I yes. on social media? Are you on social media? Yeah, you're on Facebook. Am I on Facebook? <laughs> the Book of Faces? Yes. Is that what my grandma used to call it? Oh, go to the Book of Faces, baby. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So if you want to follow me, you can always go to Reddick Edwards, IV. The fourth, I am the fourth of my name on Facebook, and if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can go to Reddick dot Edwards IV. And let me see, I think there's something out there. Do you have the link to sold out bus stop? Mm, because I, I do. Uh, you want me to send it to you? Yeah. 